This is July the 5th, which is the day after the 4th, in case you didn't know that. <laughs> Yesterday we celebrated the anniversary of our independence from British Empire, and from domination and uh, excessive abuse of power. And so I'm here today to follow up on that. This flag I hold in my hand was flown on the Navy ship USS San Diego while I was on board during a med cruise in 1987. If I unfold it, you'd see that it's dirty and tattered and torn. And uh, underway at sea during the day, it's flown on the mast of the ship. And there's a lot of wires up there and so forth, so it gets uh, dirty and greasy and it gets shredded. And ever so often we have to, to change it, put up a new one. And uh, so I decided to keep this one for myself uh, as a memorial to my service on board that ship, the USS San Diego. is a holy place for the glory and with grace sin can never enter there all within his gates are pure from defilement kept secure sin can never enter there sin can never enter there sin can never enter there so if at the judgment bar sinful spot your soul shall mark you can never enter there if you hope to dwell at last when your life on earth is past in the home so bright and fair you must here be cleansed from sin have the life of christ within then can never enter then then can never enter then then can never enter then oh without the judgment bar sinful spot your soul shall mar you can never enter then they live in sin below, heaven's grace refuse to know, but you cannot enter there. It will stop you at the door, bar you out forevermore. You can never enter there. Sin can never enter there. Sin can never enter there. Sin will spot you at the door, bar you out forevermore. Sin can never enter there. If you cling to sin till death, when you draw your latest breath, you will sink in dark despair. To the regions of the lost, thus to prove an awful God, then can never enter there. Then can never enter there. Then can never enter there. Though you have the judgment bar, sinful spot your soul shall mar. You can never enter there. Isaiah chapter 32. The title of this message is Slothful in Business. The first syllable of business is bus, B-U-S. I have a message called bus business. Those in the bus ministry cannot be slothful in visitation, follow-up, and running their bus on Sunday morning. Isaiah 32. So I'm coming here today, July the 5th, 2020, to tell you that we have been slothful in the business of the preservation of the United States of America. What used to be called a Christian nation is now full of debauchery, liberal theology, and liberal politics. Isaiah 32 and verse 5. 
the vile person shall be no more called liberal, nor the churl said to be bountiful. For the vile person shall speak villainy, and his heart shall work iniquity, to practice hypocrisy, and to utter error against the Lord, to make empty the soul of the hungry, and it will cause the drink of the thirsty to fail. The instruments also of the curl are evil. He devises wickedness devices to destroy the poor with lying words, even when the needy speaketh right. But the liberal delivereth liberal things, and by liberal things shall he stand. Are we going to be a liberal Heritage Baptist Church? Or are we going to enter the promised land of victory at Heritage Baptist Church? Let us pray. Jesus, for this message, we ask your indulgence. We ask you to help us to understand what we need to do in our part to turn this nation around and back and to do our part diligently for the cause of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Judges 18.9 says, And they said, Arise, that we may go up against them. For we have seen the land, and behold, it is very good, and are ye still be not slothful to go and to enter the promised land and possess it. God has promised the Christians a victorious life. And we as Christians of the United States of America have failed to claim that. We came to the promised land of the United States and like Israel, we let it slip away. The business of preserving God's heritage is, as at least in part, the responsibility of Heritage Baptist Church. Proverbs 12, 24, The hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. Are we going to give Caesar what Caesar's due, or are we going to give to the Lord the Lord's due? The reason many... Liberal politicians are in Washington because too many citizens, citizens have been slothful in business. Maybe we have failed to vote. Maybe we have failed to write our congressmen and senators. Maybe we have failed to fill out a petition. Maybe we have failed to supply some money to help win the war. Proverbs twelve twenty seven: The slothful man roasts not that which he took in hunting, but the substance of the diligent man is precious. Some said, stop raising cows. You want meat? Go to Kroger. Ignorance is a bliss. We have not performed our due diligence in what God has given us to do. In my series on Ezra and Nehemiah, one of, my, one of the lessons is do your duty. And I discuss various options of doing our duty. Proverbs 15, 19, The way of the slothful man is at a hedge of thorns, and by the way of the righteous is made plain. We can expose that if we just speak up. Lot was a righteous man living in the midst of sin of Sodom. He failed to speak and share his righteousness with others. As is the end result, he ended up having incest relationship with his two daughters, in creating two nations which God said exterminate. Proverbs 19.24 A slothful man hideth his hand in his bosom and will not so much as bring it to his mouth. He's so lazy he wants somebody else to feed him. Proverbs 26.15 The slothful man hideth his hand in his bosom it grieveth him to bring it to his mouth. Our social security programs of various types have produced such a state in the United States of America. We have sit on our hands too long, afraid to speak the slightest word that we might offend somebody. Jesus said offenses are going to come, but woe unto them by whom they come. Don't stop because of the offenses. Expect them. Consider the Christians of the book of Acts and those in Hebrews chapter 11. Proverbs twenty-one twenty-five: The desire of the slothful killeth him, 
for his hands refuse to labor. I want, I want, I want, I want. And I expect you to give it to me, whether I work or not. Proverbs 22, 13, the slothful man saith, there's a lion without, I shall be slain in the streets. My father-in-law would put them to shame. He had undilution spondylitis, and he was in pain all the life that I knew him. But every day, he was out there working to get enough money to put food on the table for his two daughters and his wife. Proverbs 24, 30. I went by the field of the slothful and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. He goes on to say it was turned to shambles like public housing often comes to be. Proverbs 26, 13. The slothful man saith, there's a lion in the way. A lion is in the street. I can't go out there. I might get these. Well, then evidently you don't have the God of Daniel. Jesus spake of a king who made a feast and invited guests to come. When the day of the feast was ready, they all with one accord begin to make excuse. What has been our excuse? Proverbs 26, 14. As the door turneth upon its hinges, so doth the slothful man turn upon his bed. Matthew 25, 26. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knowest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strong. That is us in our position as citizens of the United States of America. We have been wicked, slothful servants, and we have failed to do our duty. In the military, the laws, the Uniform Code of Military Justice. Article 92 is failure to obey a lawful order. Specification. Specification four is dereliction of duty, knowing your job and failing to do it. My last three and a half years, I was a military police. And two and a half of those years, I spent in the legal office. And I put together many a legal package from someone who was dereliction in his duty. Romans 12, 11, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord.